I'm Sato uh, from the Riken RCCS, uh, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm going to talk about the you know, design of the supercomputer Fukaku. And uh, as you know, and, uh, Fukaku is almost uh, and, uh, finished, and uh, it's, take, it's uh, almost three years old. <laughs> but uh, uh, I hope that our experience of the design of the Fukaku uh, is uh, useful for information for you. And uh, after that, so in, uh, I'd like to talk about the features and uh, challenges for post uh, exascale computing. So uh, the last year, I got the new position of the division director of the quantum HPC hybrid computing platform. So many people now are interested in uh, quantum computing. So at the last of my talk, so I'm going to talk about in our new project about in uh, HPC and uh, uh, the quantum hybrid computing. So this is the picture of the Bukaku. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, so the, the number of uh, nodes, that means the number of chip is uh, almost uh, 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 six. Uh, uh, 160,000 uh, are uh, the general uh, many core processors. So, and uh, the performance is the half exaprops in a double precision, but uh, if you count the peak performance of the, in, in a, a single precision, that this machine is achieved uh, in a one exaprop. And the public service already started from uh, in a March of the 2021, when that is the almost three years ago. And uh, this is the profile and uh, utilization rate. So, and uh, at, the, at the beginning of uh, uh, the, the uh, service, the, the utilization rate is the, rather uh, low, but uh, is now uh, the utilization is almost in uh, 80% and 90%. So, and uh, as you know, uh, Fugaku was the number one machine from uh, 2020 and 21. So, and uh, and, uh, and uh, for the benchmark of the top 500 and HPCZ and uh, HPL AI and uh, Graph 500. So, I'd like to uh, the, the say that is a good thing. Uh, what we think the good things is that uh, uh, at the time of uh, the operation started, uh, the, 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 this, this machine is the three to four times faster than every benchmark. The every benchmark, that means that uh, this machine can be applied to the many application. So this is the outline of, of my talk. So and uh, first part is uh, talk about, uh, is about in a, uh, design, and uh, we did a lot of the co-design, and then uh, uh, I, I just, I'd like to say, uh, the explain the how uh, the design target was achieved, and followed by the challenges for the exascale computing. So at the beginning of uh, our FUGAC project, the, we defined the three uh, gold uh, as the, uh, the KPI. The first one is the, the power efficient system. So we set in uh, power, power consumption is from uh, 30 to the 40 megawatt. And uh, the, the one of the goal is that uh, we achieve the, we, uh, achieve the in, in, uh, maximum performance within this uh, power budget. And the second one is uh, uh, the effective performance of the target application. So uh, the DIMPAC and HPCG or and, uh, another uh, the, the, uh, benchmark is just benchmark. The important thing is that uh, how we can achieve the performance in for their application. And uh, we expect uh, in, um, 100 times faster than a K computer that is the previous uh, machine in some application. So at the beginning of the project, we, our, uh, the, uh, our Minister of Education, that is our, and the, the 
fund, uh, funding agency, is organized there in a, in a kind of committees of what kind of application area is important. So uh, they define the nine area from uh, drug discovery and uh, uh, the, the disaster mitigation and also and the climate and the energies and uh, to, to the, uh, and the basic science. And uh, we asked and, uh, the, the application people from in this area to submit in a typical uh, the workload. That is, is the, our uh, the, the target application. So we got the nine uh, target application. And then we estimate the performance against the K-computer. This is the, the estimation, and this is the name of the, the application name. And then and, uh, these uh, two applications were expected to achieve you know, 100 times faster than the K-computer. So, and last, uh, last uh, the goal is the easy of use system for a wide, wide range of the users. So, uh, the, and, uh, uh, the, the, the simply saying that uh, we need to accommodate and uh, users uh, of the K computer. So, uh, system should be a kind of the compatibility to the NK computer. So, uh, at the time of, uh, at the beginning of uh, the, the development, that is the, uh, uh, 2011, at the time of uh, the beginning of the project, we uh, do the uh, basic design, and uh, we uh, don't, we did not accept in, uh, in uh, accelerators. So we decided in and, uh, and a many core approach at that time. So, and, uh, and the three uh, design target, as I said, and uh, uh, the power consumption uh, and uh, uh, the performance of the target application and the ease of use. And uh, uh, to we design the processes and the uh, system uh, with the vendor partner and the future. So to meet the, these uh, design target, we did a co-design. And uh, if you want to know in uh, more detail about this, uh, the, please refer to the, my uh, technical paper, which is presented in uh, SC20. So the system is uh, uh, the ultra-scale general purpose mini core system and uh, mini nodes. And uh, that we design the new processors, which has the ARM instruction set and the uh, mini core processors. And uh, each uh, the number of core is the 48 plus and uh, some uh, service processor and the two and four. And uh, uh, the the uh, the within chip, uh, 48 core is divided in a four group, and uh, we call the CMG. CMG means the core memory group, and uh, this 12 processor is sharing the in a L2 cache and. Uh, uh, the the uh, HBM uh, the external memory. So and uh, <coughs> uh, uh, the, of course uh, the network go chip is supporting the memory coherence. So you can run uh, the more than twelve and uh, for, for forty eight MP OpenMP uh, program can be run on these processes. And uh, uh, the, uh, the interconnect is uh, TOF-D. That is the successor of the TOF uh, network, which is used in, uh, in a K computer. So, and uh, this is the, uh, uh, the die photograph of the, our processor A64FX. And uh, we use uh, the technology of, from uh, TSMC, seven nanometer FinFET. And the size of the chip is almost in a 400 millimeter squares. And uh, everything is included. 
So in a, this is a course, and uh, this is the PCI Express interface and uh, interconnect. And then the, we uh, uh, the, uh, adopt, uh, accept, adopt an uh, HBM memory. The HBM memory, uh, the high-speed memory, is the need the, uh, the, the, the on-chip and uh, where uh, the, the interconnect uh, connection on the uh, silicon interposer. So the chip is, this uh, package is uh, including everything, memory and cores and, uh, and uh, IO interface and the interconnect. It might be uh, the interesting to compare on the size of the core and, and uh, that, that is the same uh, generation of, of the uh, the processors from the Intel Skyrake. So at the time, uh, the, the processor SHFX is coming. The Skyrake, uh, pro, uh, 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 the chip is including the 20 uh, the cores, almost the same size. That means the SHFX is more than three times more than the core, per cores. So that is because the, we adopt an in a, in a HPC-oriented design. So uh, this is tables compare the out-of-order resources, uh, of FX and uh, Skyrake. And uh, the, the, our uh, of FX, uh, the, the core is relatively small out of cores. So that is the reason uh, the, num uh, the size of the core is small. But uh, less uh, uh, out of the resources and uh, relatively long pipeline. So for example, nine cycles for 14 point, and the core has the only L1 cache. And this it's, uh, processor is uh, good for the high throughput, but uh, it's a long latency. So, uh, I don't talk that too much. This is the result of the and a spec CPU integer benchmark. So this is compared to the in, uh, in, uh, core. And uh, this, uh, uh, the benchmark is compared core to core. So uh, this is the result. The, that is the disappointing things, but uh, uh, the performance of the A60 perfect is the almost, almost the no, one fourth of uh, performance of the Intel and a single thread. The, that that means that, that if you compare to the core to core, this uh, the the uh, core is a uh, is a relatively weak. But <clears throat> this is the result of the uh, spec benchmark now uh, the spec OMP benchmark. So and uh, in average uh, the the. The performance of uh, SHFX using the 40th thread is the 65% uh, percent of the Intel Xeon. Uh, but uh, to see, uh, and we can find uh, many, uh, the, some uh, interesting uh, the things. Some benchmark uh, that, that, that is depend on a memory throughput is extremely good due to the you know, high bandwidth memory. But uh, it's a more latency-oriented uh, the program uh, has a very bad uh, performance. But uh, we, uh, we confirm that if uh, we did uh, a kind of performance tuning from the source code, we can get more performance from this benchmark also. And uh, to take a look at the uh, performance of uh, in, uh, HPC, uh, workload uh, from the open source uh, software and the open form and, uh, and uh, spec uh, and FEM 3D and WARF and uh, so this uh, table is compare the execution time and uh, average powers. So and uh, the almost same performance with the dual socket of the Xeon and uh, with the half of the power consumption. So this, uh, the processor was very good uh, for this kind of the workload. In a summary, the, the 
the performance of the scientific workload is the, was a very good. But uh, if you, you take a look at the performance, uh, the result from a more general benchmark, spec int is very bad, uh, disappointing. And spec OMP, if you comp uh, the parallelize the workload, the, the performance is uh, relatively good. So recently, uh, the many application users uh, they are using in a Python. So Python is a very bad language for and uh, uh, the parallel processing. So not to parallelize the Python. So and uh, so uh, we got the many complaints from the Python users. <laughs> and the system <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, the, this CPU is mounted on the board and oh, the two uh, the processor in this board, and uh, this is integrated like this, and uh, one cabinet, uh, one rack, uh, has uh, 384 and the nodes. There is a very dense uh, in the installation, and uh, we have uh, then uh, uh, the, uh, 432 racks, and the totally we have the 160,000 uh, uh, nodes in a system. So, and uh, achievement in one. So, the, as, as I said, we set the goal and the extreme powers. And uh, at the design time, we expect in, uh, 30 to the 40 megawatt. But the actual power consumption was the almost half in uh, the, the to a second, uh, to third, and uh, uh, just in uh, uh, 20, 20 megawatt. So, and uh, this blue line is showing uh, the indicate in the power consumption for a FUGAC system, and red line is uh, uh, the including in the uh, entire facility. So, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the actual power consumption is the uh, uh, it, it is the, the lower uh, that uh, we, we expect. And one thing about in a, in a power management is that, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the, the we took, uh, we uh, adopted in, uh, the silicon technology of se seven nanometer fin filter technologies and a custom de uh, pipeline design. That is the, one of the key of the low power consumption. But uh, we have the several modes for controlling and uh, powers. First, and uh, clock frequency is the 2.0 gigahertz, but uh, it can be boosted in a 2.2. And uh, we have the several uh, the power control called the power knob. So, for example, in a pipeline, we have the two uh, the integer unit, and uh, we have two uh, the floating point pipeline. The echo mode uh, the, the means that uh, we can stop in uh, one pipeline and uh, only one pipeline working. But uh, uh, the point is that uh, just stopping the pipeline doesn't save so much. So to uh, keep the, uh, the circuit in the more uh, the first speed, uh, we need a standby powers. So in an echo mode, we cut the stumble power in a for one pipeline. That is the big. And another thing is the retention mode. The, the power state for de deactivate, deactivating and a chip and, uh, and a CPU cores. And uh, two, there are two things. And a core retention it means that uh, uh, retention for the each core. And if uh, that core is not used, and uh, uh, the power supply is automatically stopped. And the node retention means that uh, if uh, uh, the, the retention for the, uh, the, uh, the chip uh, node level, that means the chip. So, for example, uh, this is the result of uh, the in a stream benchmark and uh, DGEM. And uh, if we apply them in a boost mode and echo mode. The stream benchmark is a memory intensive workload, so it's not so much and uh, 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 the, uh, the so much of the uh, uh, in, uh, floating point pipeline. 
So, and, and this graph shows that uh, if uh, you are using an uh, echo mode, uh, uh, we can cut in uh, almost uh, 10, uh, 12 to 20 percent power reduction without any uh, uh, performance loss. And uh, in a DGEM, uh, this is the more uh, CPU intensive uh, workload. That means in that case, uh, we should use the and uh, more uh, the, the uh, boost mode uh, to, to get a uh, performance. And if uh, you remember in uh, uh, 2022, so and, uh, two years ago, uh, the, uh, the, we got a power crisis. So even in uh, Europe, uh, uh, the computer center is, uh, had the problem of the power supply because of the the price of the energy is getting high. At that time, uh, we stopped in you know, one third of the system like this. But after that, uh, in, uh, during this, uh, uh, this period, we uh, uh, decided to make use of the more power mode more aggressively. So this is the, uh, the result. After the power crisis, uh, the, uh, uh, the, by applying the more variety of the workload. So uh, as a result, we can we could reduce the, you know, 10 to the 50, 50 power saving uh, the, from the before and uh, using a uh, power node retention and uh, core retention. And this is the, uh, the profile, uh, the statistics of the uh, power mode and uh, many users is using an, uh, uh, a retention mode like this. And uh, some users is uh, using the boost mode like this. But uh, another user is using uh, in a, in a boost and echo mode and uh, boost and uh, the retention. So this kind of uh, the, uh, the usage of uh, the, the power mode uh, they they uh, helping the power saving so much in our system. And second one is the uh, effective uh, performance of the target application. This is the result. So uh, this is the target performance of the relative to K. And uh, uh, the, this is the estimation. But uh, actually, we got more uh, the speed up than uh, we, uh, we estimated. So for example, in the two applications, Genesis and uh, Nikam LATKF, this application and this application is uh, in, uh, achieved more than uh, 100 times uh, the performance than the K-computer. And the power consumption is uh, less than 30 megawatt for this system. So, that is also uh, the more than we expect. In a summary, the Fugaku is the huge mini core based uh, power system, I think in uh, the last uh, MPP system. And uh, uh, we confirm uh, in uh, CKPA defined at the design target were achieved and uh, for example, power efficiency so the actually Fugaku is running around in, uh, at uh, 20 with the 80% uh, the utilization. And uh, many applications is running more efficiently than we expect, and then the easy of use. So and uh, easy to porting, OpenMP and the MPI. So unfortunately, we don't have any uh, actuator like GPU. And uh, uh, a 64 fx is the mini core processor designed for HPC workload. And uh, HBM is uh, sometimes very good for memory intensive application. But though so I would say the retrospective uh, uh, comment, though so the choice of the uh, ARM architecture was the very good. So we, uh, uh, the, we are very happy to contribute uh, to 
uh, uh, to uh, for for the um, HPC uh, the communities. So now, in Amazon and uh, Garbito three is is the, has the uh, the working for the HPC workload. So and uh, uh, as you know, and Google uh, Grasshopper processor is using the ARM architecture as the main CPU. And uh, design of the large scale flagship machine like a K, uh, the Fugaku, is the trade off between uh, the total system performance and budget and uh, power consumption, that is the, uh, the total cost of ownership. So many people is, uh, get attention only in the performance, but uh, actually, uh, the budget is the kind of limitation. So, maximize the total, total performance within our budget. So budget is limited, and uh, learning cost is uh, almost important. And uh, the one thing, so, uh, some of users is complaining, memory size of the each node is too small. So I think uh, we can, uh, we could uh, have the external DDR memory, like uh, Intel medical processors, but uh, we can we gave up uh, that approach because of the cost. And uh, seven nanometer technologies were the very, very good, and uh, very good time. And uh, at the first, of, uh, at the beginning of the project, the 10 nanometer technology is supposed to be used, but uh, that technology is canceled, and uh, but a uh, uh, seven nanometer uh, is called and called the name of the N N seven. That is, that technology is, was the very good. That is the point we, we can achieve so much uh, uh, power efficient system. And last one is the we have the dark side of the co-design. So the co-design is the design the system to the uh, kind of application, and uh, we define and we correct and um, target the application, and uh, we did uh, the co-design uh, for uh, this target application. But uh, I am afraid it might be overfitting this application. So, for example, to make use of the a 64 effects more efficiently, users sometimes have to the performance tuning for that system. So we, the, I think uh, in uh, co-design, is a kind of the bi-directional effort from a uh, system to system design for the application. But uh, at the same time, application has to be tuned and uh, modified to that system. That is bi-directional. But, uh, general purpose users is just learning that application and to see the performance and disappointed. So if uh, the performance is very good, it is, uh, they are happy, but uh, we need, we request, we have to request in uh, the users, such kind of users to do the effort for the performance training. And uh, if uh, we have the more, uh, the out of resources is uh, uh, more out of resources, then performance is became relatively good uh, more uh, for the general purpose workload. So that is the, uh, the I'm, I'm uh, 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 so I'm regret to, uh, 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 I cannot do this, uh, uh, the, the performance optimization. Okay, the, the PVT study project is uh, the going on, and uh, uh, the, for the post of Fugaku, the next machine. And uh, uh, here is the comparison at the time of the Fugaku and uh, Fugaku, uh, post Fugaku. The, uh, I know, I, unfortunately, I'm not involved in uh, this activity so, uh, anymore. And uh, currently, uh, the more 
next people is working for an apostle Funak. Okay, there is talk about in uh, post exascale computing. And uh, from the latest and uh, top vibrant hundred, this is a rather new, uh, they're old, but uh, now is the Oak Ridge Frontier machine is the number one. And uh, that machine is uh, exceeding the performance of the one exaflops in double precision. And uh, very good uh, power efficiency and uh, 50, almost 50 gear props per word. And this is the projection at the time of uh, the exascale project. So uh, this uh, projection say, said that uh, the, the uh, exaflops would be uh, would be achieved in, uh, before the 2020, but uh, actually it's realized at the time of the 2020. And uh, performance projection from at uh, this point, the, the, everybody say that unfortunately, the progress of the sequence technology is getting slowed down. And uh, if you project and uh, find <coughs> in, uh, at the time of the 2030, the, then the 10x approach uh, is uh, Pro, uh, will be achieved at that time. It's far from uh, the data scale. So, data scale system possible to build, the, the, and uh, what the, the uh, data scale system look like? I think uh, if uh, post uh, exascale system is the data flow, and uh, data scale system is almost impossible, and uh, it should be achieved the more and more uh, power efficient, and that means that uh, 50 teraflop power, you know, far from uh, this uh, in, uh, power efficiency. And uh, but uh, the good thing is that uh, there is the, uh, the, the recently the, the many kind of the probes and uh, AI probes and uh, uh, half precision performance. The, in that sense. Uh, uh, somebody, some machine achieved in uh, data flops in this uh, definition. But the uh, bad thing is the silicon technology is uh, uh, the, the progress of the silicon technology is getting slow. And uh, many people is uh, talking about in chip so and uh, integrated on a silicon wafer, but uh, it doesn't help the inf uh, increase the performance. Uh, the power efficiency. So the, the things we should take, the, the possibility is that uh, special purpose architecture like uh, more aggressive uh, the accelerators or you know, processing memory. So let me, uh, the post exascale system define the beyond of the post scale, the post, uh, the post exascale system, that is, that is not the data scale system, will be uh, the integration uh, of uh, many kinds of accelerators and a GPU and a PGA and like this. So each node has the accelerators, the GPU and the PGA and the special purpose processor. And another form is that uh, a kind of modular computing and the system is integrated and like this. And uh, this is one of the things uh, uh, the beyond the exascale. So, the 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 one of the example is that uh, uh, the system of uh, the University of Tsukuba, that this system has the FPGA in each node, and uh, some node has the GPU and some node has the FPGA, and the we uh, the RCCS is. Uh, I uh, have the and, uh, and, uh, FPG crisis, which is connected to the FUNAC system. So, and like this. So, there is the, another form of the, uh, the heterogeneity. So, and the general purpose system, FUNAC is connecting to the special purpose, uh, the clusters, which has the, uh, the FPG in a, in a system. So, this is the diagram. Uh, if you are interested in, uh, Please ask the, my colleague and uh, uh, the, uh, the professor Sanon. And uh, 
that means the, the, we need uh, the post-exascale uh, programming model that should be supporting uh, various kinds of the, uh, the offloading. The offloading in a node, if uh, the accelerator in, uh, accelerators in node, which is attached in each node, like a GPU and FPGA, and uh, uh, that we need uh, the programming interface to offload in uh, this system. And I think uh, offload to the CMD is the one of uh, another form. And uh, uh, the, the for, for programming for this, uh, the, uh, some of the programming mo model is o o already uh, the proposed and COCOS and one API and some uh, the, the DSL. And, but uh, if you think about in a uh, kind of uh, integration of the many kind of system like uh, modular computing, uh, the offloading clusters of the offloading to the inner cluster of the accelerators can be supported by more than a workflow type or task and paradigms like this. So recently, uh, we started then a new project for an, uh, the, the quantum computer like this. So uh, the name of the project is the JSPC and a quantum project. And uh, uh, the which is uh, conducted by our RICAM and uh, SoftBank, that is the IT company. And uh, with a collaboration with the University of Tokyo and uh, Osaka University. So this slide is the busy slide. So I'd like to explain more detail about the uh, uh, next slide. So I already said uh, the quantum needs a, a, a supercomputer, the flexible integration in a, a quantum computer and the supercomputer is, might be, um, become the very important topics for practical use of the quantum computer. The, I think this is the, uh, the, uh, the graph and uh, figure is taken from uh, IBM. So this is the, the, the quantum uh, uh, the performance of the uh, error mitigation, or that is an ISC machine. And uh, this is the quantum uh, the FTQC. So they say, they uh, crime, uh, they say that they, uh, this is the cross point. So now uh, the, the quantum computer uh, by the NISC machine, uh, NISC uh, processor, is the time I am going to exceed the performance of the classical computer in some application. So the, the <coughs> and, uh, uh, I think uh, and, uh, so far the quantum computer, NISC machine, only had the 10 and 12 qubit. So at that scale, so it can be simulated by the, uh, the supercomputer and uh, up to the 30 qubit. But uh, now the uh, number of qubit is going up to the 100 qubit. So it uh, cannot be simulated by supercomputer anymore. Now we are now uh, to use an actual machine more uh, the 100 qubit. So I think I, I, uh, now and a quantum technology, a quantum computer technology is coming to the in a, a kind of the engineering phase. So that means uh, like a, a Moore's law of the silicon, uh, the number of qubits is going up uh, by the effort of the in a, many researchers. So, and uh, the, this is overview of our, our project. The title is the Research and Development on a Quantum Supercomputer Hybrid Birth Home for Exploration of the Uncharted the Computer Capabilities. The name of project is JHPC Quantum. And uh, it's the project is the, uh, the five years. And the uh, mission is that uh, we developed a kind of software to integrate and, uh, HPC and uh, the HPC and the quantum computer. And uh, using these softwares, we should learn the platform. And using 
that's flat home. Uh, uh, we uh, aim to uh, indicate a kind of the advantage of uh, a quantum knowledge PC, uh, the, the hybrid computing over on the, uh, the supercomputer uh, the performance. And uh, again, <clears throat> this is the figure, and uh, here, and uh, this is the classical side, and uh, that means the digital computer side. So I don't hate in a world of the classical. So it should be called by digital computer. And, uh, and uh, there is a supercomputer, and uh, this is the, uh, the quantum and the simulators. So we define the same interface between them that we are going to develop in uh, this uh, hybrid system software. And uh, uh, Osaka University uh, people, uh, researchers, is uh, now developing a kind of the modular uh, quantum software libraries uh, the, the, for many areas of application. Using uh, these libraries uh, that we are supposed to uh, the run and hybrid computing uh, on this platform. And uh, here, uh, the, the, now, uh, the many, many uh, quantum uh, the computing researchers is, is working on the cloud and uh, making uh, the uh, kind of the circuit and submit and a quantum computer and get a result and to analyze the, in a, like this. This is a typi typical workflow. But I think uh, to make use of uh, uh, the quantum computer from HPC, the, the program has to be written by uh, a kind of single source. And the uh, single source program is compiled, and then uh, the compiler should uh, the, the, uh, the generate the code for uh, the HPC and the, uh, the, the uh, quantum side. And they, the two, two program should be uh, the, the connected and uh, uh, co, co, co scheduled at the time for making use of these computer resources more efficiently. And this is the, our plan that, that we got uh, to kind of uh, uh, the uh, actual uh, quantum computer from the IBM and, uh, and uh, continuing. And uh, for IBM, uh, we, got, we are going to install an IBM machine in our centers and uh, near to the and a Fuyaku machine and another GPU machine. And then <clears throat> the quantum computer uh, is uh, installed in a different place because of the restriction of the installation condition. And, but uh, this computer is also is connected by the internet. And uh, we have the partner, uh, the Osaka universities and the University of uh, Tokyo. They have uh, supercomputer centers. And uh, at the at uh, time of uh, that, uh, our target uh, is that uh, to build a system to share this uh, quantum computer from the different side. OK, and uh, the last one. The, I think uh, no, another possibility is the kind of the grid computing again, the grid of uh, an exascale computer. So recently, the internet people is proposing a kind of slice like this. Then you know, that is the virtual uh, uh, the VLAN network, and uh, they call it in a slice. And uh, <clears throat> to operate, uh, I think uh, one of the application is that uh, data management uh, over uh, the, in each layers in a, each slices. The, I think. Uh, and uh, many uh, the, the, uh, different kind of the workload uh, using a supercomputer and another uh, the global uh, uh, the internet now uh, using and uh, sharing the application these kind of things and uh, and uh, I think uh, this is the, this kind of platform is that might be useful for. Uh, to realize the concept of the data continuum. And uh, uh, it's, it's good for uh, AI and big data application. 
Okay, this is the rust, right? So I think our post exascale computing is to find us the, uh, the, uh, the sum of uh, the beyond the exascale. There is the many possibilities at the different tables. And uh, many kinds of the accelerators, the GPU, and a specialized device of the machine running, or AI, and FPGA, and the quantum computer. And uh, for quantum computer, I think uh, from uh, HPC point of view, quantum computer is a kind of accelerators and uh, as a different system. That, that is, we need a kind of a system to system integration. So it's different from uh, in a GPU. Uh, features attached to the in each node. And uh, I would say we started in a new project. And uh, th there is a different table, okay, and uh, with a an node and uh, integration of the different kind of uh, clusters, uh, some, some, uh, some, sometimes called in modular computing, and uh, the, the over the network arthritis like a grid. So uh, for this, uh, we need a more programming model and uh, smart schedules and workflow. So thank you very much.